Hey folks, it's Art Wolf. Welcome. I have a vintage unboxing for you today. Something special that came into my hands uh, in a, what I thought was a pretty good price on eBay. We are talking about Stonewall's Last Battle. This is a 1996 release from Avalon Hill. It is volume 5 in the Great Campaigns of the American Civil War series, and it is, of course, the Chancellorsville Campaign. At least until Hood Strikes North comes out, this is the smallest game in the series. It is a one-map campaign. It does include, if you look at the back, um, a bonus scenario, the Battle of Brandy Station, which is the largest, the first large-scale cavalry engagement of the war. Um, this is... From the series designed by Joe Balkowski, but it is a game design from Ed Beach. And it does have either a map that has a lot of overlap with one of the Stonewall Jackson's Way maps or is identical to the Stonewall Jackson's Way maps. Now, I don't have the original Stonewall Jackson's Way. I have the, uh, the Multiman reprint. Multiman Publishing is now in charge of this series. And we see that... It is shrink wrapped, which is fantastic. As you are aware, I do not like to do, I do like to jostle the camera from time to time, but I don't like to do uh, unboxing videos if they're not shrink wrapped games. So, standard Avalon Hill bookcase box here. Let's see what we have. We have two dice, which are definitely late period Avalon Hill dice. So, let's set those aside. We have a rule book. Uh, this is the rules of play. Don't know if there's one book in here or two. Usually, I think these were one. Indeed, they are. So if we look here, we've got, um, looks like, four basic game scenarios and two advanced game scenarios, one of which is the Chancellorsville campaign. Uh, looking for Brandy Station, it is basic scenario number four. Uh, this is, I got to tell you, a little bit musty, but it's otherwise in fantastic shape. Um, so we have here a, what is this? A 48-page rule book, but a good chunk of this is the whole Game is History thing uh, by Ed Beach, who I got to meet at uh, Winter Offensive, which was great. Uh, extensive designer's notes. Um, so we got a total, really, of 20-some pages of rules here, I think. Um, this is one of my favorite series. At this point, it's a series that the more of it I play, the more I like it. We got some kind of weird Avalon Hill uh, die-cutting schmutz here. Uh, we have an ad for the general. Look at that. Um, for those of us who remember the general anyway. And on the back, the Avalon Hill Game Company, Hartford Road, Baltimore, Maryland. So I should send this in just to see who gets it nowadays. I, I'm actually not going to do that. Uh, we have here an ammunition pad. Um, this is not something that we get any more in the series. I am not sure if that's because... These rules are, are now obsolete. That's possible. Uh, looks like they're the same on both sides. You can track Union and Confederate ammunition. Uh, I did mention that it's the smallest game in the series, so let's see what that means. We have one counter sheet, which is the leaders, what I call the leader markers, which are leaders and units. Um, and then you have the, um, the, pers the, the manpower markers in addition to that. So there should be another sheet of those in here as well. Uh, we have the sort of standard... Okay, so we got a force display for Fog of War. One-sided on kind of standard Avalon Hill cardstock. Uh, we got the Stonewall's Last Battle Player's Aid card with the combat chart. Um, this player's aid has changed very little. I think the newer one's a little bit better organized, but... Uh, that's okay. This has an abbreviated sequence of play on it, which I think is not on the current one. So here's our counter sheet number two, which is, I'm not sure if they actually standardized this or not. Um, they could have, uh, with your standard uh, Great Campaigns of the American Civil War manpower markers on here. And then on the back, so we got a 15 on the front. On the back, we have a 10. And then manpower is 15, but combat value is 10. So two counter sheets. Uh, we've got additional... Player aids, or an additional player aid, which is identical to the other one. And we have the beautiful map, which I'll see what I can do to get you to take a look at. Uh, and then we have a Avalon Hill, late period Avalon Hill counter tray. These are the ones with the sort of, well, the A fit in the box and have the sort of locking thing on here so they won't just fall open. 
Uh, we also have, hell, I could get a whole video out of this. We have the Avalon Hill customer response card with a little survey and an Avalon Hill catalog from 1996. I might well do a video just about this because this is actually pretty neat. Um, I probably have one of these things already, uh, but I'm not sure where. So let's see what we can do to spread out the map. Now, the style... The maps are not quite color matched in that between the, the, the new maps from MMP and the old analog maps from Avalon Hill, uh, but the style is the same. Um, and and once again, I'm going to take the position. Now this is, you'll see it over here, Whoops, Stonewall's Last Battle. So this is a, at least a slightly different map than the one in Stonewall Jackson's Way 2. Um, and... I mean, what more can I say here? These these are the, the most beautiful maps in wargaming as far as I am concerned. A couple of different artists have, have done them, but the style has been uniform. Um, I'm not sure who did this one. Uh, I know that um, Charlie Kibler did a couple of them, and he's doing the current ones for Multiman. Does it say that on the box? It probably doesn't. I don't see it. Um, so could be Rick Barber too, um, but just gorgeous maps. Um, I got a little more space here now, so at least I can, at least in a one map game, I can give you a, a shot of a good chunk of the map. And if I were to lay it out like this, this is my solution for glare at the moment, by the way, is this, the back of this poster holder. So let's see if the new camera tripod works to pan up and down from the Potomac over here. At least I presume that's the Potomac. All the way up west. Just a gorgeous map. Stunning maps. So, uh, really looking forward to this. This does mean that there's only one game in the series that I'm missing. That would be on to Richmond, which is the Peninsula Campaign, which I think for anybody familiar with the series will feel that that's going to be a really good campaign in this series. Um, but I don't have it yet. It's the one that goes for the most money, and it's also the one that is uh, one of two that's getting reprinted sometime in the not terribly distant future. Um, you will definitely see more stuff from me on the Great Campaigns of the American Civil War series. Like I mentioned, as, as I have evolved as a war gamer over the last few years, it's become one of my favorites. I think it is a great and brilliant series, and I would like to see it... Uh, it uh, flourished more, you know, just as much as it has with, with Multiman. I think Multiman's doing a very good job with it thus far. Although, you know, the games never come out as quickly as I would like. Uh, but we're getting a new game uh, probably late 2020 or early 2021 with Hood Strikes North 2. It will make its number, I think, with no difficulty. So this has been Stonewall's Last Battle from the Avalon Hill Game Company 1996. I want to thank you for watching. Please like the video if you have enjoyed watching it. Please leave me a comment if you have any questions or if there is something specific about the great campaigns of the American Civil War series that you would like to see, uh, do subscribe to the channel. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.